guess first I'd like to point out we're going to move a little bit further south in this talk where we're working with the Snake River sockeye salmon. And you need to think on a smaller scale. Instead of uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of fish coming back, we're dealing with hundreds to just a few thousand, so a very small population. Again, my name is Dan Baker, and I'm the manager at the Eagle Fish Hatchery for Idaho Department of Fish and Game, and my talk today is going to be the progression of Snake River Sockeye Trap and Hall activities. And I want to acknowledge uh, Russ Kiefer, Chris Kazafa, Kazafka, and Eric Johnson for developing some of these slides and sharing them with me to use in this uh, presentation. Um, the Lower Granite Trap and Hall activities Third, I have sort of, uh, three, they occur over three areas. Uh, the first is here at Lower Granite Dam. Um, this is the eighth and last dam that the Snake River Sockeye cross as they move up the Columbia and Snake River uh, corridors. Um, the dam is 430 miles, river miles from the mouth of the Columbia and about an elevation of 750 feet. As we move into, it's about the halfway point uh, for the return, we move into central Idaho. Uh, the Redfish Lake area. We also work with Alturas and Pettit Lakes. Uh, Redfish Lake is the largest in the system <coughs> and is about 900 miles um, from the mouth of the Columbia and it sits at an elevation of 6,500 feet. And down here just outside of Boise is the Eagle Fish Hatchery where the captive rootstock program is located and responsible for the trap and haul activities. It sits about 300 miles uh, south of the Lower Granite Dam, and we're about 150 miles from Redfish Lake. In today's talk, I want to cover uh, the feasibility study that was completed in 2010, and then move on to the 2013 uh, trap and haul activities, and, and talk a little bit about the 215 uh, trap and haul, and finish up with some holding and spawning results from the 215. Uh, season and as in the earlier talks, the 2015 uh, season was a very uh, warm, warm year in the rivers, and we saw a lot of mortality. A language from NOAA's uh, 2008 biological opinion wanted to investigate the survival issues that were occurring between Lower Granite Dam and the basin, and they tasked the uh, action agencies with working with the sockeye program cooperators to come up with a plan to, to trap fish at Lower Granite and uh, transport those fish back to the basin. So in April 2010, uh, Stanley Basin Sockeye Technical Oversight Committee met with members of the action agencies along with uh, NOAA Fisheries who operates the dam at Lower, or ops, or operates the trapping facility at Lower Granite Dam. Uh, we developed a trap and haul protocol, and this protocol needed to um, trap sockeye while the lower granite dam trap was also trapping, trapping uh, Chinook and Steelhead. During, uh, from July 1 to July 15 of that year, we did trap 19 uh, sockeye. We transported those fish back to Eagle Hatchery uh, for holding in our program. And during this time, we had no transport mortalities or holding mortalities. So we, we demonstrated that trap and haul would be a feasible, uh, could feasibly be done to collect fish at Lower Granite Dam and incorporate them either into the brood stock or release back to the basin. Then moving on to 2013, due to low conversion rates in the Snake River corridor and high water temperatures, um, it was decided to implement trap and haul to collect brood stock for the program at Lower Granite Dam Trap. During this time, the trap was not operating to sample Chinook and Steelhead because of the threshold of it being over 70 degrees uh, water temperature in the latter. And the program was also unable to collect sake at this time because these, the sake were holding up uh, below the ladder and not moving into the ladder and moving up. There were attempts to changed the flow in the ladder, but those were all un unsuccessful to try to encourage those fish to move up the ladder. So after that, the action agencies and Army Corps of Engineers uh, made some modifications to the ladder trying to draw water, cooler water from uh, deeper in the lower granite pool and adding that to the ladder to lower those temperatures a little bit. 
And just uh, as a side bullet here, in 2014, we had normal uh, migration conditions in 2014, and we saw a high return of stockhai for our program. It was a record return of over 1,500 fish that made it back to the base in that year. And this was probably also the highest return since the mid-1950s for the program based on window counts at the lower Snake River dams. And then we move on to 2015. 2015, we implemented an emergency travel call. We had below normal snowpacks uh, in Idaho. We had earlier than normal runoff. Uh, this created low river flows and um, high river temperatures during the migration uh, time for the sockeye moving up through the corridors. We also started to see low pit tag conversions uh, moving through uh, from Bonneville up through the Columbia, or Columbia Basin corridor and into the Snake River corridors. So emergency trap and haul was implemented at the Lower Granite Dam Adult Trapping Facility uh, starting on um, July 13th. This graph here uh, shows some uh, river temperatures of the Lower Grand Four Bay. This graph came from the uh, Fish Passage Center website, and there's similar graphs that you can also track temperatures uh, in Bonneville, McNary, and Ice Harbor pools. The yellow line here shows the 10 year average uh, versus the red line, which is the temp water temperatures in 2015. The gray shaded area is uh, overlapping sort of the, the peak run of the sockeye as they move across Florida Granite. So you can see even you know, starting in early June, the, the water temperatures in 2015 were already climbing close to 70 degrees and that was similar throughout the, the Columbia Basin. So this is a graph that shows survival of the pit tag fish as they move through the system. Um, the middle line, blue line there is reflecting the average for the program. And you can see what happened in 2015 is the red lines. So we saw high loss of uh, Snake River pit tag fish as they moved up through the Columbia and into the Snake River uh, corridor and even all the way back to the basin. And just as another, re another reference point, I, I put in the 2016 um, survival, which was a little bit above average, and we had uh, normal migration conditions in 2016. So in uh, 2015, we estimated over 4,000 uh, fish had crossed Bonneville based on pit tag expansions for the Snake River program. Uh, this we see average survival from Bonneville to the basin at about 44%. In uh, 2015, we estimated only 1% of those fish made it back to the to the basin. Uh, if 44% of those fish would have made it back, we would have seen another record year for the program and would have been around just over 1,700 fish uh, returning. So we set up the trapping protocols in 2015. Again, we initiated trapping on, on July 13th and we trapped through the end of the month. We set up a trapping rate of uh, a four hour period from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And again, we, we had 100% trapping because in 2015, we were not sampling the Chinook and Steelhead at this time because of ladder water temperatures again. This uh, window was sometimes extended. We modified our protocols a little bit, and when we observed fish uh, passing the lower granite window, uh, we knew it would be about 30 to 45 minutes before that fish would hit the trap. So if we had a fish passing around 11, you know, we could extend that a little bit. We trapped Monday through Friday, and initially we were uh, returning these fish to the Eagle Fish Hatchery daily, which is about an eight hour drive. Um, later on in the program, we started to hold fish at the Lower Granite Juvenile Collection Facility for one night. Not sure what happened there. Um, this graph here shows, uh, you know, we were able to collect about 30% of the fish that passed Lower Granite during our, uh, from 713 through 730. And we also uh, trapped about 51 uh, sockeye that we returned to Eagle Hatchery. But after running genetics on uh, this group of fish, we did find 16 of those fish were from non-Snake River origin. The graph here shows uh, the red bars being the fish that remained in the river, so we're outside of the trapping window from 7 to 11, and the blue bars uh, reflect what was actually trapped and hauled back to the hatchery. So in summary, again, we were able to capture 30% of the, the run that, that we estimated. 
I think I lost a couple slides in there. Um, we did increase survival for the fish that would have returned in river, especially this is where I lost the slide. I had it broke out into two quartiles and I go up further. You can see that 16 is blank and that's what happened. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I had the, after this slide, I had it broke down in quartiles and just basically showed that um, during the first and second quartile of pit tagged fish, we had about 30% uh, survival from lower granite to the base. And the third quartile is when we implemented our trap and haul. And during that quartile, we had a little better survival to the basin at 40%, but then you added on the trap and haul, and we had about 60% survival. And during the fourth quartile, we started um, July 16th, uh, the only representation was from trap and hauled fish, so we didn't have any fish, pit tag fish that stayed in the river that uh, passed the dam after July 16th that made it back to the basin. So we did, uh, again, uh, we increased survival by bringing these fish um, back to the hatchery. We had better represent representation of uh, the later arriving fish at Lower Granite based on trap and haul, but we did collect non St. River fish at Lower Granite. So just moving into the, the performance of these fish once we returned to the Eagle Hatchery. In 2015, we brought everything into the hatchery, whether it was trapped and hauled from Lower Granite or it uh, was uh, trapped at Redfish Lake and we transferred it to uh, Eagle Hatchery to incorporate into the brood stock. So in, we did trap uh, 56 fish that made the entire in-river journey, and again, 51 fish were trapped and hauled, and the 16 fish determined to be uh, Upper Columbia stock were culled from the program. We had one pre-spawn mortality, again, no transport mortalities, and the pre-spawn mortality was from a trap and haul fish from lower granite. And we thought maybe we'd see a higher incidence of pathogens, since these fish were under a higher stress load from being in the warmer temperatures, but that wasn't the case. We didn't see any IHM in the brood stock, and we only had one female that tested positive for bacterial kidney disease. So the, some of the spawning results, the 16, we spawned 16 females that we trapped at Lower Granite and uh, returned to Eagle Hatcher and spawned 21 females that stayed in the river. The middle uh, row there, I just wanted to point out, there was a little difference in spawn timing. Um, the trap and haul fish, the average spawn date was November the 3rd, where the in-river fish was October 16th. And also the bottom row there, we had a higher survival um, to eye up with the lower granite trap and haul fish at about 85%, and the redfish lake in-river fish uh, was about 70 percent. This is just another way of showing that the red bars represent the in-river fish and the red dots there uh, represent survival on each of those spawn dates and the blue <coughs> bars are the the trap and haul fish so again it's about a two week or 17 day difference in in spawn timing. And overall we had poor egg quality in 2015 uh, this is actually one of the uh, fish that we called from the upper river stock from the females and you can see a lot of uh, reabsorbed eggs and the of eggs and we've seen that throughout uh, throughout spawning and eagle also and just wanted to finish up uh, the sockeye captain rootstock program did complete a, a report that's called the trap and haul emergency procedures and feasibility plan at lower granite dam which uh, goes over some of these metrics I talked about today and talks about how those will be used uh, in the future if we decide to uh, track and haul again. And NOAA Fisheries also completed a report, 2015 Adult Sockeye Salmon Passage Report, which uh, goes over some of the uh, passage problems that we saw in 2015 and survival problems. So with that, I'll take any questions. And I apologize for those two slides that didn't show up. <laughs>